G'day guys, Duckville here. We're going to have a look at a pretty cool replay, if I uh, remember the comments on the forum correctly. Uh, this one is actually going to be between, um, this is a special one actually, we've got um, a Korean here by the name of Pult. Some of you who watch GSL will know him as Pult Prime from the Prime uh, clan in Korea. Doing uh, very well indeed over in the GSL and whatnot. Um, although, hang on, who from Prime is in the finals? I'm not sure. I don't know. They got they did pretty well. They've got a lot of players. Some very uh, some very good players. Pult being one of them. He's maybe not the uh, super best in the clan, but he is definitely a great player. And uh, his opponent today. This is a very special part about this particular vod. Is the one and only Moonglade, who is from Australia. This is actually on the Korean server. However, um, I do understand, and I'm pretty like 99% sure that this is actually the real Moonglade, but. Um, he is actually playing here on the Korean server, and he happens to come up against uh, Pult Prime, as you can see. So we've got the guys here. We've got Pult up the top here on Metalopolis at 12 o'clock, and Moonglade is down here at the 6 o'clock. So this is going to be uh, Metalopolis, probably one of the best maps in the current map pool, if not the best, uh, alongside uh, Shakuris Plateau, and uh, I know some of you guys might like the smaller maps, but myself, I like these maps where you can uh, go on macro pretty hard, as you can see. Um, there is a very easy to take expansion here for Zerg, especially for Zerg. They do like this map because there is the way you can sort of expand sort of up here and then across. And uh, these aren't the totally most favorable positions for that type of play, for that very heavy macro play we see from Hydra sometimes. Generally, if you're Zerg, you sort of actually want to start uh, close air positions. Number one, so that you can harass your your uh, Terran opponent, generally the Terrans, you can um, harass them with some muters and keep them inside the base and keep a lot of map control and then you can actually expand to the natural, expand to the third and the fourth which is actually away from where your opponent is. So if you're actually expanding down in that direction you're making the distance for your opponent to get to these the expansions a lot further away which of course helps with um, using uh, using uh, your control over the map. Zerg obviously has a lot of map control, especially very early on in the game with um, overlords as we can see here. So we've got some overlords just cruising on over. Um, but um, just controlling the map is a very important part here on Metalopolis and Zerg generally can do it quite nicely when they're in those sorts of positions. Well, um, starting off here, we've got Moonglade doing a bit of a gas steal. Um, he has stolen um, Pult's second gas and uh, very uh, nice little tactic you can use against the Terrans. It obviously denies a second gas, which can lead to a lot slower um, mech production. If, you're, if your Terran opponent is going to go mech, you can obviously deny that a lot here. Um, however, we do have an early Reaper here from Pult. It has been spotted by uh, firstly the Overlords that are here, and then they'll probably be spotted down here. We do have a bunker going down out of position here. I'm not even sure if the Reapers can hit that far. They do, obviously, any units inside a bunker do actually get the um, plus one to the range and as we can see the Reaper is actually going to come across and try and uh, deny some of the uh, drones and he's actually going to take care of the Zerglings that are here so nice little work there by Polt. He's going to lay down some harass on the hatchery here. He's going to try and take out the um, whoops, we just try and take out the Zerglings there. The bunker is now done but as you can see that is just out of range. I'm pretty sure that is like one square out of range for the, uh, for the Reaper to be able to hit the, the uh, hatchery effectively, but we've got the, uh, the queen out now, the queen denies the reaper, get the hell off my lawn, she says, and uh, we actually have another reaper inside the bunker now, but um, looks as if Moonglade's not overreacting to this, this is one key thing about um, when you're getting a uh, very early cheese or harass like this, is just to be careful of how you react, you don't want to overreact and um, just make 10,000 zerglings, because obviously it'll take a while for the zerglings to get into the bunker and then actually to um, kill the Reapers given that they don't, uh, th that the Zerglings don't actually have speed. And as we can see, Pult's actually cancelled the bunker and he's getting the hell out of there. He salvaged it and gotten the, uh, gotten the money back from that. And as we can see, he's actually transitioning into an early expansion here with the command center just about done with its orbital command and he's whacked up four racks. So he's going to be sitting here on four racks. So he's obviously going to have, uh, going to be churning out a lot of bio production. I would assume we are going to see a lot of, uh, bio play from him today. And we've got um, Moonglade just sort of spreading out some creep. This is obviously one of the hallmarks of the very 
uh, skilled zergs is to actually use your creep tumors and spread out the creep a lot because creep obviously helps with roaches at the start of the game roaches need a lot of uh, need the speed bonus from the creep to actually keep up with some of the units and uh, obviously for hydras as well if you're going to transition into hydras so it's uh, good to get your creep going this reaper comes out here and he's actually trying to get away from the queens there the queens will not catch up because they too are very slow when not on creep and uh, the reaper is going to run away to fight another day and in fact he is going to come back i think perhaps he's just going to try and swing around uh swing around this side here to the natural and actually come in and kill some of the drones here but i do not think it's going to work moonglade grabbing two spine crawlers not often that you actually see two from the zerg to actually uh, help with their defense but it does happen from time to time i think that may have been moonglade just reacting to this five racks that's actually up because we could be seeing a timing attack from pulp prime just uh, to come across the map and actually um, do some damage against the Zerg forces, but um, I think we're going to move out here. He does have them uh, grouped up. No, he doesn't. He's actually just just boxing those ones, and he's going to come out here and build a bunker at the natural. He's going to secure this one, transfer some SCVs over, and get that expansion rolling. Now, we've got four spine crawlers going up now from Moonglade. I think he is, just because he is actually in the dark a bit, he's only got, um, as you can see here, he does, has no vision of what's up here apart from these five racks that are already done. But uh, he may be just suspecting that a timing attack is coming and indeed it is. He's got the uh, Marine Marauder Force coming down the map. They are going to waddle down in a bit of a column down the streets of Metalopolis and they're gonna come across here now. We're just having a look for the Zerg players out there. Just um, obviously, you need to be careful of the angles of your of your spine crawlers. As we can see here, they do have a generally a very uh, high surface area to, to attack things from. So that's going to be a key part to this battle is how Pult engages this. And it looks as if he might be coming across to the side. He did actually kill one of the creep tumors that was here, and uh, that's going to pull some of the creep back. But it looks as if he's going to engage at this from this side angle where only two of the uh, spine crawlers can attack from. Some Zerglings coming in, trying to take out what they can, but these uh, Marine Marauder forces are just incredibly tough to kill, especially when you've only got one spine crawler now beating on them. But uh, they are actually probably going to take out this hatcher, I would suspect. The transfusion goes down from one of the queens, and a second queen puts it in as well, and the hatchery does go down. So all of these forces do get cleaned up, but the uh, the hatchery was lost there by, from Moonglade. So a bit unfortunate that he's lost that. It is going to set him back a bit, obviously, with his resource gathering and of course his lava production as well now that he's only down to the one hatchery with his three queens out his uh, response though is to actually take a third and he's going to put some pressure on so these mutalists are going to come across the map here this is uh, the big advantage of the mutalists on this map is he can use some of this uh, protected area up here and over here to actually hide your mutalists in while they actually uh, recover from any attacks and defense here and it, as we can see a few uh, marines have come out to try and uh, stop the mutalists from getting in the way Zergling's coming across here, a nice little micro there by uh, Moonglade to actually just send in one Marine just to, uh, one Zergling, sorry, just to check out what was happening while he, uh, and as you can see, there is a, a very uh, sufficient defense here. We've got a whole bunch of Marines, we've got three bunkers up, and uh, Polt has reacted quite nicely to this potential harass. Mutalist coming across here just to try and uh, get some shots off on this supply depot. It is getting close to low health, but uh, the Marines are going to come through and tell the Marine, the uh, Mutalist to get out. And uh, as we can see here, these three bunkers are probably going to get filled up in just a second because Polt may be suspecting that there is um, an attack coming through. He can't actually see too much of what's here, but obviously using uh, some uh, sort of uh, strategies such as the imaginary player, where you sort of imagine what uh, your opponent could be doing at this point, given that he is a very, very good Korean player, Polt knows that there is something that uh, could be out there watching his base. So he's uh, got those bunkers up. Now, as we can see, the power of Zerg here, uh, Moonglade has actually redrone back up here. I believe he actually used a lot of his um, that time that he was harassing to actually just redrone up. As we can see here, we've, we have a whole bunch of, dr of uh, drones out at the moment. We actually have uh, Moonglade has caught back up after. I don't. I'm not sure if he actually lost any drones during that um, first attack on the hatchery, but um, he is actually still ahead of Pult in terms of his um, drone count. He's, uh, he's just lost a couple because he's building some extractors. You might want to actually put the drones into these two extractors here, Moonglade. He's uh, just a bit behind there, but uh, we'll see what he does with that.